So, so another example similar to the last one, slightly larger powers, but don't let that scare you. Same idea applies. Now, in this case, only one of the two powers is odd, right? Sine is raised to the odd power, cosine is raised to an even power. So we don't get choice in the substitution like we had in the last one. We pretty much are forced to manipulate the sine portion of the integral. So what we have to do is we have to say, okay, so sine, sine to the fifth x, I can write as sine to the fourth x times sine x. And so sine to the fourth, of course, is sine squared squared. So I can read this as 1 minus cos squared x, all squared. That's the same as sine to the fourth times sine x. Okay. So we make that substitution and we get the following. We get the sine to the fifth power of x times cosine to the eighth power. So that's equal to the integral of 1 minus cos squared x squared. I'm going to put the cos to the eighth x in here. And then we have sine x dx, OK? So that sine x is, is this one here, right? We have the 1 minus cos squared squared. Sine x is going there. We also have that cos to the eighth, OK? So now we make our u substitution. This time, of course, u is going to have to be equal to cosine. du will be negative sine. OK. So when we substitute, we get a sine change, right? That minus sine, let's just put it right out front of the integral. And so this is going to be 1 minus u squared squared times u to the eighth times du, right? So sine x dx is du up to a minus sign. We put that minus sign out front. OK, so easiest way to deal with this square is just multiply it out. 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth times u to the eighth. Multiply that power through. So we have u to the eighth minus two u to the tenth plus u to the twelfth. All right, and now it's simple power rule integration of a polynomial. And I've only got room for one more line, so maybe I'll substitute back while I'm at it, right? So we're going to put cosine back in. So this is going to be minus one over nine u to the nine, but u is cos, right? Minus two over eleven cos to the 11th power, 1 over 12. Oh, sorry, minus, minus, that's a plus. And that one is a minus. Let's not forget that overall minus sign out front. And then we have cos, oh, sorry, and add 1 to the exponent, 1 over 13, cos to the 13, plus our constant, right? So the result's not pretty. But we can get it done, right? It's a very systematic thing. So any time you encounter a trig integral involving powers of sine and cos, where at least one of these two has an odd power, it's always the same story. Split one of them off to do your u substitution. And the remaining ones you rewrite in terms of the other function using the Pythagorean identity. It's always going to be that story. In the next video, we'll look at what we can do if both powers are even.